guys, this is AC Service Tech and today what we're looking at is charging a new outdoor condenser that was just installed and it's been running for five minutes. The unit has a thermostatic expansion valve and is a little low on refrigerant charge. So on our low side we see that we have a 39 degree evaporator coil and on the high side we have 90 degrees. This is r 410 so we have a pressure of 277 PSIG and we have a temperature of 90 degrees. So 90 degrees minus 90 degrees equals zero subcooling. So it's the saturated temperature over here minus the actual temperature of the liquid line. So we have this sensor, temp sensor, actually taped on the liquid line right now and we need to add refrigerant. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up this r 410 bottle. Before we add in the vapor side, we're going to go ahead and purge the lines first. We have our bottle of our 410A coming out as liquid. Now we're going to go ahead and purge the air out of the lines. You're not going to see any refrigerant change really coming out of the vapor side because it's vapor. And here we have our liquid. Okay. So now we're all purged and we're going to go ahead and weigh our refrigerant in a little at a time into the vapor side. We're going to zero our scale out and we're going to start adding in the vapor side. Since I don't have my quick charge cylinder here, I'm just going to go a little tiny bit at a time, okay? I normally have my quick charge cylinder here and I took it off to do some uh, some tests at the shop so I'm gonna have to charge without it just a little at a time right now we're reading right now we're reading 3.4 ounces that we put in our sub coin has increased a little bit. We're reading 91 on this side and 89 on this side, so we have two degrees of sub cooling, just about. So R410A has to come out of the bottle as a liquid and we're just putting it in a little at a time so it has a chance to get into the saturated state and possibly even into the vapor state before going into the compressor. We're just opening this handle up a little bit, just allowing a little bit of pressure through, kind of acting like a metering device. So if you don't have a quick charge cylinder, that's what you can do. I really do like those uh, quick charge, Imperial quick charge 535-Cs. I can add a lot of refrigerant in fairly quickly uh, and with no worries. I don't hear any change of noise coming from the compressor with me doing this presently right now. I know I'm very low on refrigerant and that's why I'm adding as much as I am. We put in about 8 ounces so far. As we add refrigerant, what's going to happen is we put the refrigerant into the low side. So the low side is a lower pressure than the bottle itself. The high side is higher than higher pressure than the bottle. So you actually have to add the refrigerant into the low side. As you add it into the low side, what's going to happen is the head pressure and the saturated temperature in the middle of the condenser coil is going to rise. At the same time, the temperature on the liquid line, which is right here, is going to go down. So what's going to happen is, as this sat temp goes up, now it's at about 92 degrees, this actual temperature goes down and that's what makes your sub cooling. So 92 minus 86 and a half is 5 and a half degrees of sub cooling. I'm going to add a little bit more. And 
this is a change out so if you did a new installation you could actually measure the line set that you have left and that would let you know exactly how much refrigerant to weigh into the line set that you did use so knowing how much you cut off of a 50 foot roll will tell you how much you did use and then you can actually weigh in the correct amount of refrigerant per foot of liquid line set and vapor line set. Presently we've weighed in about 11 ounces of refrigerant. Target subcooling for this unit is found on the reading plate. It actually calls for 10 degrees of indoor TXV subcooling. So subcooling is always taken in red on the high side gauge with a temp sensor on the liquid line. Right now we're at 93 degrees saturated temperature in the middle of the condenser coil. And by the time the liquid refrigerant comes out, it comes over here on this liquid line, we're at 84.6. So we're at a little bit more than 8 degrees of subcooling. Since this is calling for 10, I want to get this unit right around uh, about 11, 12 degrees of subcooling. I like to always go a little bit higher than what's needed. And I mean a little bit. Subcooling is correct if you are within plus or minus 3 degrees. So if it's calling for 10 degrees as a target subcooling, uh, it would work if it's 7 and it would work if it's 13 but sevens on the low end. I want to have extra refrigerant in case future techs are uh, attaching and detaching and taking refrigerant out of the system. I want to uh, have just a little bit extra in there just in case of that. I don't hear any compressor noise. You know, you'll hear more noise when you're adding refrigerant like this on a reciprocating compressor. This is a scroll compressor. A scroll compressor, when you look down from the top of the outdoor unit, it looks like a circle. A reciprocating compressor looks like an oval, and reciprocating is the older style compressors. about 9 degrees of subcooling. We're at 93. 93 degrees sat temp and 84. So that is 9 degrees of subcooling. My scale just went out. Isn't that nice? Battery's bad. Alright, so when we left off we were at 13 ounces of refrigerant. So we're about a pound right now roughly. The customer is not getting charged any extra for the refrigerant. It's just part of the uh, proposal. So I'm not going to worry about that. But normally we want to always scale it, scale it in, you know, weigh it in, just to make sure you know how much to charge the homeowner.
looks like we're about 11 degrees of subcooling. We've got 94 degrees on the pink inner ring for our for tonight's sat temp, saturated temperature in the middle of the condenser coil. So 94 minus 83, and we're at about 11 degrees of subcooling. I'm going to go ahead and stop there, and I'm also going to add a little bit of refrigerant from my liquid line. So I'm going to go ahead and shut the tank off now. disconnect from the bottle. Now I have this service line right here and it has liquid refrigerant in it so I'm going to continue to charge. Discharging the refrigerant that's in this hose into the system. Right now we're reading 90, 93, about 93 degrees sat temp, 82.2. So we're adding a little bit of refrigerant in at a time from this disconnected line that has liquid refrigerant in it from the bottle. Okay, so now I have that line open. I'm going to go ahead and put this on the back. We have all the refrigerant out all the liquid refrigerant at least. The vapor refrigerant that's in this line is at the same pressure as what's in this line. Okay, so we're at about 96 degrees sat temp, and we have 84 degrees over here, so that's 12 degrees of subcooling, so that's that. So now I'm going to go ahead and uh, disconnect my uh, gauge set and we should be good. That's how you do it. That's how you do it. Now what we're going to do is we're going to leak check these valve ports. So we're going to use micron leak detector. We're going to see if any bubbles grow out of the ports. I have had Trader valves bad from the get-go uh, during an installation before so I just want to check them make sure they're good you want to make sure you have refrigerant oil in the caps here make sure they seal up real well and also on the threads possibly too just to make it go in a little smoother We don't have any bubbles, so now we're going to blow it out. Definitely want to make sure you get all that out. And we're going to put our caps back on. I keep them in these little plastic bags. This is actually from the filter dryer. I just keep them uh, so that they don't get sand in them. Alright, that's it. Hope you enjoyed yourself. We'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.